drop a Y in the text chat if you can hear me. Hey, Lexi, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. So Lexi's the better looking version of me here today, everyone. So welcome, Lexi. Great. So everyone can hear me fine. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Jackie. Good day, Sheldon. Good to see you. What about everyone else? Can you all hear me fine? Yep. Okay. Fabulous. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Great to see you, everyone. So welcome to our first time we've ever done anything like this, chakra alignment. And so on, on awareness of the energy body, a topic that I think is probably one of the most important things in terms of understanding yourself. We all, sit, we all are getting better understanding of our physical bodies, but my experience is that most people don't really understand their energy bodies. So without further ado, we'll get on the way. What I'll do is introduce Lexi. And for the first time, really, in our, what we're doing is we're doing a joint webinar together. So the chakra alignment started because Lexi and I were working on chakras together, having a chat about it, exploring some energy work, and it just went from there. So Lexi, just maybe say hi and give a quick introduction to yourself. Hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is Lexi, and I have been working with The Awakening Within for around three years now. I'm really passionate about getting this type of information out to people because I think it's really beneficial to our lives in general and also Ascension. Absolutely. No, thank you, Lexi. So let's get started anyway and share what you're going to be getting. So how it's going to work today, everyone, is that I'll be sharing the first part which will be going through and getting things underway. The main content I've asked Lexi to be taking this side as Lexi is very, very skilled and familiar in this area. She is a chakra alignment and a ferret clearing specialist who works with a lot of clients and is working in the other side of the world from America. So we've got all grids covered. So Lexi will share a bit more about her background and herself once it comes time for that. So just a little bit about starting. Get rid of all distractions, turn mobiles and social media on silent so you can focus and get the most out of this training. So if you've got questions, please put them through. Um, if they relate to the flow of the webinar, no doubt Lexi and I will attempt to answer them in the moment. If they don't, just hold them to the end. We've mentioned about handwritten notes because my experience is that when you do that, you tend to retain information better. And recording is available within 24 hours. Now, we're aiming to finish the content within 90 minutes from when we start, but then there'll be a further section of taking questions and then sharing based how you can continue your further learning in this area. So without further ado, what you will learn today. Okay, so who's been excited for this, looking forward to learning more about this, or who's been curious to really understand this chakra energy body? Yes. Yes, yeah, Sheldon, okay. yeah. It's a, it's a fascinating area, Liza, Jackie, Steve. Yeah, it's a really intriguing area and something I've just been getting very, very fascinated with, with, into. So just to give us a bit of an idea, who, if you really understand what chakras are, just type a Y. If you're very new to it, just write the word new in the text chat. I just want to get a bit of an idea whether you know what it is by and large, but just want more understanding, or whether it's something that you really don't know much at all. I just want to get a little bit of an idea for who's here. Jody's quite new. Santane is new. Sheldon knows it. Um, I hope so, Sheldon. We've been working together for a while. <laughs> that was just me being cheeky. Jackie. Um, yep, yeah, okay. So it seems like most do, but there's some who it's quite new for, which the good news is if you're new to it, we are going to be covering some of the basics and really showing how it all works. So what you will learn so how these base, how these chakras actually impact your health, wealth, and relationships, and they really do. And um, oh, Steve Godwin, nice to see you here, mate. Um, if it's who I think I is, I remember you from years ago. Good to see you. So the seven chakras all affect it. Like for example, if you have problems or misalignment in your heart chakra, um, you will be guaranteed to have be having problems with relationships, um, with friends, with people. Um, abandonment issues or just stuff around hurt, fear, that kind of stuff. If you have throat chakra imbalances, more likely than not, you have a major problem speaking your truth. 
if you have solar plexus um, imbalances, then you have problems stepping into your power and your boundaries. They're just some simple examples. So they do affect your life in every way, shape and form. What causes your chakras to feel blocked and how to instantly clear them to restore your drive and passion for life? So often when you're feeling sluggish, when I'm really out of whack, I now know my chakras, something's gone out. There was a time in my life where all my chakras were so blocked and the first time I ever did a chakra clearing, I think the only one that was actually not completely blocked up and messed up was my throat chakra, which was had a bit of a chuckle. And that's that made sense to me at the time because I generally do speak my truth. I've got no problem being very blunt and telling people what I, what I think. But that was the only chakra that wasn't imbalanced, um, that was basically balanced. And so I can remember going through and clearing it. These days it's reversed now. About three days ago, I actually felt myself really out of sorts. And when I tuned in, my sixth chakra, my third eye was out. And once I rebalanced it, back to normal. So the challenges you experience when your chakras are blocked and how to realign them for massive transformation. So it's so quick and easy once you understand this. It's probably one of the fastest ways to get yourself back on track when you feel you're out of sorts. How to quickly and easily clear any chakra blockage at any time with a simple technique anyone can do. How to discover the liberating power of your energy and really just raising your energy in your energy body. It was the greatest thing in the world for me when I understand my energy body. And I know Lexi would be definitely the same. I didn't even know that I had one, I remember, some years ago. And that's why, as a bit of an aside, I've, had, I've been very mindful about what I put in my body what I eat, especially what I inject into my body, because your energy body is a very sensitive thing. And if that goes out of alignment or gets damaged, it can be very difficult to repair that if you don't know what you're doing. And Ken Wilbur, who writes The Religion of Tomorrow, predicts that over the next 10 years, the future of world medicine will become an etheric medicine, that there will become a lot more awareness of the etheric body and the etheric healing and how fixing that up before it manifests in the physical. I, I was getting gallbladder problems for years, as an example, and no matter what I would do, they'd keep coming back. And I did all the right things. When I finally discovered there actually was a major etheric tear and blockage in my gallbladder and implant and various other resistance factors, I did a, did a, a fast and a three-day cleansing and went through and cleansed out my etheric body. My gallbladder was... Um, I passed some stones soon after and I didn't have a problem again. So... There's actually a PhD doctor in Romania, Dr. Venus Williams, a friend of mine who literally did a whole PhD thesis on how to find things in the etheric body before they enter into your body. And it's becoming, it became quite a well-known thesis in Europe. So there's a lot more awareness of this area. So you'll be hearing a bit of some of the cutting edge stuff today that's going on in the world. How to free yourself from that boring life. And I know Lexi shudders at the thought of a boring life. We talk about it and you want to run a mile, don't you, Lexi, at the thought of being bored? Yeah, yeah, I like stimulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. So once you release trauma and suppress emotions, you can start having fun again and enjoying life. So the Amazon, what's very interesting is if you read Dr. Alberto Valaldo's Healer Shaman Sage book, for example, one of the best teachers in the all, you know, Amazonian shamans, he actually teaches that, as soon as he said, it's very well known in the Amazon how important chakra is for your medicine. You know, it's very important to have balanced chakras. He said the Western world is still very much caught up in what he calls technology based healing rather than what he calls etheric healing. So, this is where you're really going to be experiencing a bit of that today. Mastering intuition, in clarity, and energy levels. Grace says in the chat that you look cute, Lexi. So, I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that. So, I said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and promise today is that is to help you experience the power of your chakras. Now, obviously, in 90 minutes, we can't turn you into an overnight expert, but we certainly would love you to walk away having a much better understanding of your chakras, even how to transform your blockages. We will be doing a special clearing on one of your chakras. To do them all would take way too long, so we'll be doing one of them. And by doing this, you start to notice profound shifts and changes in your energy, relationship, finances, and other areas of your life. I can honestly tell you that if it wasn't for what I know in this area and what I experience, there's no way I'd be coping with what's going on in the world around me. And the number of times I say to my friends, 
and my clo- and the close ones to me, I said, I don't know how I would be coping with the world right now if I couldn't keep my chakras clean and if I didn't have higher connections, like with higher energies. I said, I really don't know. I said, I don't know how people do it. And then someone said, well, they don't really do it. That's why they go to the pub. That's why they're freaking out on Facebook. And I'm like, that's why people are beside themselves with terror, um, all that kind of stuff. And I thought, yeah, it's pretty true. I mean, who here has found that connecting more with higher energies or this kind of work, or at least the hope of something different, is, is been one of the main things that's helped you really survive the last 12 months in the world? Just out of interest, who's found that's really been a, a big me. factor in awakening? Yes, definitely. Yes, yeah, me, definitely. Christine, yep. Yep. Sheldon, yep. Taylor, Steve, yep. Kathy, yeah. There's so many people awakening. I, I was speaking to someone last night on Facebook who said until a year ago she wasn't even awakened and this whole thing awakened her. And so, yeah, Adrian, Steve, no, yeah, absolutely. It's so important. It's like that's why it's become my main main driving work. So what we're going to be doing is giving those who take advantage and say to the end, as well as giving you a clearing, an opportunity to further, further your education in record time. And really right now, things are moving so fast, you have to basically get on top of things pretty fast. So not only clearing, aligning your chakras to high energy, but also how to maintain them to help you achieve your goals. That's really important. Now, regardless of whether you take advantage of this offer, um, I'm supremely confident you'll get tremendous value in today's training and you're gonna walk away with something really special. Okay, so when we offer that at the end, it's a serious course. So if you ask to invest in yourself, put the time, commitment and effort in to really see a life-changing difference. So just to be clear, the kind of training we're offering is really gonna be targeting people who, yeah, are just keen to put the hard work in. And yes, once you've mastered these skills, it will make a huge difference to your life, but like anything, you do have to put the work and commitment in to mastering this. And I can remember saying to some friends and clients of mine just recently, I said, isn't it amazing that after our lockdown in West Australia that happened about six weeks ago, most, most people were posting on Facebook how relieved they were that they could go back to the pub, they could go back to cafes, and there's pictures everywhere, people sitting in cafes and pubs wearing masks. And I, I just sat there and thought, honestly, in 20 years' time, when we look back, We'll look at ourselves as the stupidest generation probably in the last 300 years with all the knowledge <laughs> we've got. Would you agree, well, Lexi? That's hard hitting. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You, you think about 2020, Lexi, running, people running around stocking up on toilet paper, um, basically being told openly by major pharmaceutical heads that the vaccine was an experiment. And that's why they wanted indemnity. Um, what else? There's just so many things about having to wear masks in a cafe. You have to walk in with it on, but then you take it off when you sit down and when you eat and when you finish it, you put it back on. But if you go to the pool, you can you have to wear it again, but if you get in the pool, you can take it off. I mean, it's almost like a comedy, isn't it? Yeah, it is like a, a <laughs> horror comedy, like a horror comedy, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, who else looks at the world right now and thinks, gosh, how do, how do we get to this place? Does any, anyone sometimes feel that way? Humbling, yeah. With Sheldon, <laughs> Kathy, Christine, yeah. 100%. You have to laugh, don't you? It's nuts. Yeah, it's just nuts. I mean, it's so, lives are trying to think about it. Yeah, look, that's but Yeah, right. When your chakras are cleared, you will find that you start to see it for what it is. Like, I just see it as part of a shifting that's necessarily happening for humanity to get ready for what I see as a much better Earth and a golden age, and some have called it the age of Aquarius. I, that, and I just see that any new phase of life, evolutionary, always requires a shift, a, a shift. Like, when I shifted from being an employee to a business owner, major shift. I know Lexi's doing a major um, shift and advancement in her life, and I know she's certainly been having challenges in the evolution, haven't you, Lexi? Oh yeah, it's been a roller coaster. Yeah, <laughs> that's, all, that's all we see. So hopefully today you'll start to get some tools to help you more easily and smoothly navigate the roller coaster called Planet Earth right now. So just a bit about myself: um, ten years working for the tax office. Um, I was a government official, don't hold it against me, but that was my dark side. I was also an attorney at one stage. I was an offshore 
tax specialist, tax planner, professional investor, still do all that, love cryptocurrencies, really heavily into that, do various other investments like private equity. So I do all the kind of financial side, but a little bit of a weird mix because at the same token as I'm doing all that, I'm on here doing this webinar with Lexi, where we're focusing on the etheric body and health and finances. So really, I've been living two identities for quite some time in my life, the spiritual yogi and the financial um, expert. And as I've seen it, you've got to have your finances mastered. Otherwise, it becomes very stressful being a spiritual teacher. And that was one promise I made to myself that I had no interest in being a broke spiritual teacher. And that's something that I would love everyone here who's got any interest in the spiritual path. To, as you get your chakras aligned, you'll start to feel the same way. And as a very good example, if your root chakra is horribly imbalanced, you will be generally living in survival mode no matter how much money you have. Whereas by contrast, if your root chakra is balanced, you will be very, very secure. Your endocrine fight flight will be well balanced and you'll be finding that even if you don't have a lot of money coming in, it won't bother you. You'll just see it as a temporary phase, just like sometimes we have winters where it's cold and wet and horrible. So a bit about me there. And being a speaker, an international speaker on cruise ships um, around the world. I've done webinars since 2014, done hundreds, probably thousands of them now. So that's a bit about me. And being very passionate about the spiritual awakening of the planet ever since my Council of Nine experience in 2018, which some of you know about, which I won't go into depth on that right now. But I had a life-changing experience when I hit a point where I really just wasn't sure anymore if I wanted to be on the planet anymore. I literally was just tired. I was over it. I felt like, yes, I had a business. I was financially doing okay. I was, I had all these qualifications and I ultimately felt like a failure. And in, if you'd asked me in April 2018 or three years ago from the day how I was feeling, I felt like a failure. I felt like I'd failed in my life. I hadn't really done anything of value. And I was fortunate enough two months later on the night of my birthday to have a experience with the Council of Nine, which was a group of higher ascended energies or um, beings who basically showed up on a shamanic retreat and gave me the fright of my life and told me what was coming upon planet Earth, told me that there was going to be a time of great challenge and darkness. And they, they told me clearly that they'd be resetting the financial system. They told me there'd be a big problem with pharmaceutical companies and vaccinations. And they told me there were some major environmental problems that had to be fixed. And all three of those things had to be fixed very fast. And I was also told that it had to become a lot more order and organisation within the spiritual movement because I was told clearly that if you don't, you're going to be taken over and lose a lot of your freedoms. And so that was a bit of a wake-up call for me. As they said, right now, the spiritual, what's called light, light worker movement is so disorganised and so all over the place that unless there's some order and some serious training coming into place. And that was actually how the Awakening Within was, found, was founded. It founded from that dream or from that actual experience where I was genuinely, unlike previous spiritual experiences before then, when I tended to have more, um, it was more just visions and uh, imaginations and then senses. I actually saw everything, like I'm seeing Lexi right now in the camera. I was taken into planets, so I was taken into other realms and over a, many days over the next seven months i was showing a number of things i was even telling my family about airports in lockdown in 2000 in, in november i was telling them that megan markle was going to rise to prominence in a big way and it was going to be very problematic when she does and so pretty much i've been watching a lot of this come to pass and i know that right now we're heading into perilous times so these are times more than ever before when perilous times are here but you've got to be strong. You've got to be clear. Your mind's got to be immensely clear, especially as the financial system, as you see, it starts to reset and change, which we're not that far away from it happening. And that's going to be very, very problematic if you're not ready for it. Hence, this is why we're doing this, to really give you the tools so that on the one hand, you're beautifully balanced within yourself, within your mind, your soul, your heart, your spirit. But at the same time, you're then ready, ready to fight and stand firm for what's important for you. Who can relate to this, by the way? To what I'm saying. I know I do. Yeah. Well, at least Lexi and I do. Um, who else? Yeah. 
Adrian Taylor. Yeah, I had a feeling we've got some good people. Christine. Mark, yep. Eliza, yeah, no, nah, it's good. Uh, Kathy, it's great when you've got to line people. I like the energy in this webinar at the moment. So, okay, who this is for? <coughs> One, you may not know much about chakras, but you intuitively sense that, um, what's this comment here? Is it really? Yeah, I remember when you first said it, it sounded like BS lock has come to pass. I can't read who it's from, but thank you. Um, maybe you can tell me where your name, I can't read the name here for some weird reason. Steve. Oh, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, no, most people thought it was bullshit. <laughs> and then when it happened, people were in shock, especially, I remember when I was telling people that Meghan Markle would rise to prominence, and I think everyone looked at me like, yeah, you lost your mind, and even I did. And now I must admit I'm probably watching in horror because I was showing certain things that would happen with her and what she'd be saying and what she would do. And I was told when she starts to rise to prominence, that was a time to really get ready for war for, and be warned. And I remember told a few people that I said that was a very that would be a very key sign. So life feels like a constant struggle in areas of your life, like health, wealth, relationships, and purpose. You know you aren't manifesting the life you deserve. If that resonates with you at all, just type a one in the chat. If that resonates with you. If it doesn't, that's fine. There's a couple more. With none of you, that's really good. Yeah, quite a few here. Oh, okay, thank you, everyone, who's responded. It's just good. It helps me understand. So the second one, is you understand quite well what chakras are, but you're just a bit blocked, clouded, sluggish. You may get headaches, migraines, uh, things like that. Something in you knows if you don't clear your chakras fast and step on your path, you're not going to get the results you earn for and won't ascend in the higher dimension. So in other words, you just know that you won't go to that next level of your life and it's going to be a sluggish problem. So you know you've got to do something about it and get more in your path than you are right now. If that's you, just type a two. Yep, Liza. Yep. Okay, so there's quite a few on this one too. And that was my sense today. And the third one is you may feel like your chakras are crystal clear, like really clear. Yeah, thank you, Fiona, Bernie. But you're keen to gain a greater mastery of your energy body. Like you'd love to feel and experience powerful, life-changing upgrades to your chakra system to accelerate to the next level and ascend. So that feels like you. Just type a three. Yep, Tracy. Yep, Adrian. Yep. Great. Okay. Now, it's okay. Some, some have typed more than one, and that's okay because some things you go, yep, yeah, but both me. So, fantastic. So, the big problem is that particularly in the Western world, higher spiritual esoteric teachings like the chakra system has been non-existent until recent times. And that's been very true because at one stage in the world, higher esoteric teachings are really valued. And in places like India, many others, technology has wiped a lot of it out or made it go into the background. In the 30s, for example, higher energetic medicine was already starting to open up. There was already like things like water fasting teachings. That was all encouraged. Once pharmaceutical companies got more control of the world in the late 1930s, it, it's been going, it went backwards quite a lot ever since. So... It's been non-existent and only really in the last 10 years it's really been starting to awaken and even more so the last few years. So especially in this digital age, you get information overload and often feel like you may have a lot of knowledge, you may have a lot of info, you may have a lot of um, incredible wisdom from artificial intelligence, but you just know you're missing some real life-changing wisdom. So the result is you feel like a constant void, like something's missing. So... By not having a mastery or relationship with your energy body, where you're pretty much connected as a permanent attachment to artificial technologies through your phone, your computer, you often end up feeling overwhelmed, experiencing pain and hardship, financial struggle, disconnected from source, out of purpose alignment, toxic relationships. My chiropractor told me, but he said, computers have made me very rich. That was his comments to me. He said, I wouldn't have a business if I didn't have people on computers all the time because it just does all kinds of stuff to the neck, to the back, to the muscles. 
And then, of course, the effects of EMFs, um, electromagnetic frequencies, all that kind of stuff and AI, Facebook overload, it can really affect you. So learning to connect with your energy body and have clear chakras is so important. So indeed, it only goes worse if you're experiencing hardships if you go into the Nile, as your chakras will not magically align themselves by intention. That's really important to get that. So they will not magically align themselves by intention unless you specifically intend to do that. So it could be your life is going okay, and just but something feels missing, and just when you think you're getting ahead, there's like a chain holding you back, which you just can't seem to break free from. Is there anyone who feels like that a little bit right now? Like, you know you're going okay, but you're like, mm, something's just holding me back, and I'd like to step forward a lot more than I am right now. Yeah quite a few okay great thanks for sharing everyone you really engaged group which i really appreciate because it just helps me to get and sense where everyone's at right now and give you maximum value so yeah so yeah if you're feeling constantly sad this is the other thing with chakra alignment you feel bored and you tend to fall into self-sabotage patterns when you tend to be misaligned in your chakras you just don't feel balanced you feel out of sorts do you I, I, I'll admit it happened to me the other night. I actually didn't realise I'd gone out of balance and I was literally kind of mindlessly scrolling through Facebook for like two hours, literally doing nothing productive. And I finally stopped myself because I thought, hang on a sec, why am I doing this? And when I tuned in, I realised my chakras had slightly gone out. I immediately rebalanced them, did some deep breathing for three minutes and I felt literally fine and I felt back centred. So... Yeah, quite a few can relate to this. This is good. So now what we're going to do is have a little bit of a look at how we can solve this problem. And on that note, I'm going to introduce you to the lovely Lexi with her lovely, very listenable voice to take it from here and start sharing as a technician for the next um, 45 minutes to an hour on how we can solve this problem by understanding more about your chakras. So Lexi, over to you and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Hi, Jackie. Hi, guys. So excited to be here and to share this awesome information with you guys. Um, this information and knowledge has helped my life and transformed my life in unbelievable ways. Um, I feel so connected to higher realms. I feel so connected to my oversoul. I feel safe. I feel provided for. I feel healthy. And I'm just really excited to share this with you guys. Um, there's a little bit of a delay on my side, uh, side with the slides. So... No, that's fine. I'll put it up, Lexi. And um, yeah, well, you've been uh, you've been involved in the awakening within for a few years. You came to us a few years ago, and you're so different now since you've aligned your chakras, haven't you? I know. Thinking back when I first started with Awakening Within, I don't know what I would I don't know what I would be without you guys. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. Um, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. So yeah, I'll just go ahead too. and share. Thank you. I'll go ahead and share a little bit about myself. I just wanted to share my mission with you guys, so you know how serious I am about this work. My mission is to elevate the collective and reaching higher states of consciousness through practical expansion, self-exploration, mastery, and activation. I'm here to hold space and be a channel for all to come into full realization of the Christos within and how to use this connection to transform our reality into a divine expression of creation. I've studied creation and universal properties for the past three years, which has led me to my purpose. Understanding creation on such a deep level has left me with the responsibility of, of making it a harmonious experience for everyone. Um, I'm the teacher, I'm a teacher for the Awakening Within as of um, recently, just partnering with them and I'm really excited to get that on and underway. This is my first live um, webinar with them, so that's really cool. I'm a founder of RISE, which is Reclaiming Individual Sovereignty for Everyone. This is just getting off the ground. It's um, going to be a spiritual based community where we really focus on things like chakras, things like coming together and unifying and really just raising the vibration of our areas. And then also Shine the Light Network, which is a um, fundraising movement to um, we do we use our gifts like, you know, chakra readings, tarot readings, astrology readings. And um, and doing those and offering those to people and then and donating the money that we get to, to causes. We did one last year for Polaris, which is to stop human trafficking. And also the head of community at Leave Normal Behind. That is a modern day renaissance movement to help people create things that matter. 
give back love and encourage others to do the same. And I know Elisa is on. She's a member of Leave Normal Behind. So it's such an honor to have her with me here today as well. And I'm also uh, certified in mediumship and channeling through a practice modality group, which means I can connect to spirit and, and also channel with uh, spirit guides. And I'm also certified for org clearings through the Awakening Within and I'm a chakra alignment specialist. And I, this is hard for me to put here, but I did want to touch on it. Um, I used to, I'm a recovered drug addict. I used to be in a really low place in my life um, in my early twenties when my dad died. So um, I feel like it's just an, an incredible like miracle that I'm here um, being able to teach you guys what I know. No, excellent, Lexi. I mean, I remember you telling me how you like you recovered from drugs and, and and trauma in that area, and even you were mentioning about depression and voices in your head, and how aligning chakras and etheric clearing was the thing that turned your life around. Yeah, it's the only thing that helped me. Um, the only thing that helped me it was the it was the answer. Um, the crystals just like came to me, and it was just like you're here to be a spiritual teacher, and you have to get your butt in gear. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. All right, so we're going to go into some chakra anatomy. First, the chakra is Sanskrit word for will or disc, and it refers to the energy centers within the human body. And there is seven inside of your body, and there's eight total morphogenetic chakras. And we're going to go over two of them as well, two of the morphogenetic chakras, along with the seven inner body chakras. Each chakra has a unique frequency and color band associated. So with the colors of the rainbow, you know, um, there's a, it's a spectrum of vibrating light frequencies. So like the red is the stability and then up to the sacral is like the creative seat of life. And then the solar plexus is the I will. And you go up higher until you have this full embodiment of an individual that's capable of creating and manifesting their own life. And this comes directly from the light frequencies that is used. And we call it, and it's even mentioned like in the Bible, they call it the, the rainbow body, activating the rainbow body. That's what the chakra system is. So the chakra is really Would it be easier if you actually, if I gave the slides over to you so you could manage them yourself? Uh, if you can do that, yeah. All I have to do is stop sharing it and, you, and then your computer comes up. So I can do that for you if you want. Oh, right. Let me make sure. I don't think I have the PowerPoint. Oh, wait, I'll keep going then. I'll, I'll look after you. Don't worry. I'll just keep moving. Okay. Just say, just yeah, say this next is slide. Working fine. Me change. Just say next slide. Next okay. slide. Perfect. I'll be your bitch. Perfect. I'll be your bitch. I'll be your bitch just this time. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of that. Has the sound dropped out for others? Can everyone hear? Sony, yes, 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 yeah. I think it might be an issue on your on your side with the audio. Maybe um, come in and come back, come out and go back in. So the chakras rotate clockwise, and um, they they um, they can rotate the opposite way. But that's not the uh, that's not what you want. If they're rotating the opposite way, then that means you need a chakra alignment. Next slide. Yeah, so when your chakras are under influence of uh, dark energy or sorcery or, or, or anything that's um, even demonic presences, they're going to spin counterclockwise. I have seen this on clients before. Um, if you are an individual who has a big path ahead of you and or you're, you're, you know, you're here to do something um, very specific that the dark energy might not want, they're going to do what they can to, to keep you back and to hold you so they'll, they'll attack your energy field. And if you're not properly protecting yourself and keeping yourself clear, then it's going to leave you open to these types of attacks. Next slide. So your chakras spin three to four inches outside of the body. They are inside of the body, but they the vortex is what projects out. So you have four, three to four inches outside of the front of the body and three to four inches on the outside of your body. And your energy body actually goes all the way out 
of your body. So a big projection of light and there's specific, there's even cameras that you can like take a picture of yourself and you'll be able to see your aura and what it looks like. So this is just an idea of what it would look like um, if you could see your, actually see your chakras and what they were doing. Next slide. And they link to your uh, spine and your central nervous system. This is really important just because their nervous system is such a crucial part of our experience. You know, if you're dealing with issues with the nervous system, it's pretty much going to put you out completely. And it's also because of how closely re they re are related to the chakras and the energy body. They correlate right together. Next slide. The chakras correspond to bundles of nerves, major organs, meridian lines, and dimensions as well. And the bundles of nerves in your side of your body connect to specific chakras, um, specific organs connect to, connect to specific chakras. And you also have meridian lines, which are just like our channel flowing of energy throughout your body that also connect to your chakras. And then your chakras also communicate to the dimensions around you, creating your reality. So they're a really significant part of our life. Next slide. So we're going to go over the awareness of the energy body and how it works. This is just a diagram of the orc level chakra and hobo body correspondence. You see all the pretty colors and the big projection of energy around your body. And then you can see the vortex is where the chakras are. And you can see all the lines. That means that these lines are connecting to the dimensional fields around you, directly communicating to them uh, emotions, thoughts, um, and things that you would want either want to experience or or don't want to experience and um, it's good to know these dynamics so that you can can work with your chakras to create the reality that you want next slide oh you're, yeah so here your chakras well i guess go back really quick i forgot that was mentioned your chakras interact and communicate to the menstrual fields the matrix making up the reality around you that's what i was talking about they're just constantly communicating and sending things to your to your reality to help create your experience so when we have these blocks and these attachments and these suppressed emotions all of that is directly affecting our reality and that's why it's so important to to keep them clear and come into alignment so that you can live a beautiful life okay, next slide Yeah, definitely. It's a new perspective. We don't, uh, we're not really taught that. Like we have these chakras, but like what do they do? They literally make up their reality. That's what their role is. It's so cool. So there is an esoteric realm that governs the physical. The chakras are the storehouses for data that we collect over time and use this input to create our reality. So the, the chakras are taken in data, thoughts, emotions, um, experiences, memories, um, traumas, suppressed emotions, all of these things. It's just collecting and then creating that as it goes. Um, throughout your daily life, get an next slide. So yeah, the chakras are gonna affect our emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical well-being. All around, they, they do affect every aspect of your life. Nothing goes untouched. Even your finances, even your relationships to people, even your relationship to you know your yourself and your spirit and your work, all of these things play into factor when you're talking about the energy body because everything first starts from the energy body and then everything else exists after that your next slide so chakras have a connection to our neural networks i know when we do or clearings um we, we do what you receive is the quantum release and that's a, a, a release of the old neural networks that are communicating um to your body and to your reality and that's what what's creating what's going on. So if you release those old neural networks and then uh, get new downloads from your higher self that are going to be able to make new connections for neural networks. Like uh, this is a funny one the other day. Um, I've been having issues not wanting to like really work out. Uh, and I had a pop, I had, had a clearing the day before and then I had a pop pop into my head that was like um, to work out. I like, well, actually wanted to work out. And I was like, oh, that's funny. I've never had a thought like that before. And I just like acknowledged I didn't work out, but I did acknowledge that it was a new neural connection. <laughs> So that was really funny. That's so funny. That's like that's like me saying to you, "Oh, I, I had a thought yesterday to give you two hundred dollars. I was going to do it, but then I just didn't do it." You'd go, "Give me the two hundred dollars." I know. I was just like, "That's a new neural network connection," and I was like, "Oh, I'll keep that there for later." <laughs> so funny. Okay, right, next slide. 
So how chakras block, how chakra blocks are created. We're going to go over uh, different ways that we can get ch chakra blockages. Um, this could be traumatic events. It could be a difficult birth. I know I um, had issues with my birth. I was, I came out not breathing and I know that directly affected me um, in my, in my daily life. And I had to go back all the way to my birth and do some work around that. Um, losing a parent also causes a lot of chakra blockages, especially if you don't deal properly with the grief and the emotions that come up with that. If you don't, if you don't grieve properly, then you're going to create chakra blockages in your lower chakras. I could do next slide. Uh, extreme loss. If you experience extreme loss on a financial level, a car accident, you lose a family member. Um, all of these things are going to create potential quantum potentials and blocks, imprints in your in your field that this could be created again. So if you go into an analogical state of mind where you go into no time and you're experiencing something traumatic that your body's trying to shut down from, a part of your soul or a part of your ass will shut down just to protect the rest of itself. And then that way, that's how you create imprints in your chakra. So then that, these experiences can potentially happen again in the future. Next slide. Um, not speaking your truth is really going to stifle you and your energy flow. If you're not speaking your truth and it's not you're not using your throat chakra, then it's like it's just going to keep building up until like you're just like ready to like just give up or like throw in the towel because you're like, what's going on here? I can't express myself and I don't know what's going on. And I have all these feelings, all these thoughts, but like I'm not able to connect to the people around me because my throat chakra is blocked because there was times or instances in the past where you didn't speak your truth. Yeah, this is definitely a big one. And the throat chakra is so important because it's connected to your psychic, your psychic self. It's connected to your soul on a really big level. Um, not being heard, right? Yeah. And like, so it's it's up to it's up to us to make sure that we are heard, that we are speaking our truth, that we that what we have to say does matter because it does. It's your reality. This is your experience. And yeah, speaking your truth is definitely a big one. It was one for me as well. And after I, I got past it, um, my life shifted in, in massive ways, yeah, for sense. sure. Ways you can even imagine, just communication alone is, is a really, really crucial, essential part of this experience. I'm getting the next slide. So suppressed emotions, the most destructive emotion is suppressed emotion. So if you are feeling really heavy, dense emotions like anger, sadness, depression, anxiety, and then you're suppressing it. This is one I used to do a lot. And then you're suppressing it because you don't want to deal with it. You used to improve on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Um, these dense emotions get trapped in your chakras because you don't want to deal with it. So then it has to go somewhere. <clears throat> Yeah, it goes so it has to go somewhere. So your chakra is just it's like a storehouse. So your chakra is going to take it in and it's going to hold it and it's just going to keep piling up and keep piling up until it turns into like physical pain or really traumatic experiences in your reality, in your relationships. Um, you know, outbursts that you don't understand why you're having these outbursts is because you have these suppressed emotions within you that you haven't addressed yet, and which is really dangerous because this can cause um physical illnesses and diseases as well. I know I had a, a big, big problem with keeping suppressed emotions that would get stuck in my neck and in my back and in my shoulders. And the pain was so bad. I would just lay in bed all day in a heating pad. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, it really does. It affects our life. Um, it affects our daily life in so many different ways. So uh, suppressed emotions can be trapped in any chakra, depending on the vibration. Um, you know, different chakras will hold different frequency emotions based off of what their role is. So stuck at frequencies like grief, shame, being depressed, being stressed, all of those things are stored in your chakra system. You know, all of these unseen things, thoughts, emotions, memories, where do they, where are they? They're, they're inner chakras. Get to the next slide. Another thing is addiction and attachments. They um, these obviously affect our, our chakras as well. If you have attachments, they attach directly to your chakras, and it's whatever chakra that you have open or that's an easy target. So let's say you have a block or you're opening your sacral chakra, then in, in some type of attachment or entity or or 
thought form can attach to your chakra and then try and affect your life um, in really negative ways because then it'll start feeding off of what it's getting from you. And it's um, also related to addiction. If you have addiction, if you're having addiction, most chances are you probably have attachments that are causing those addictions. So everything kind of plays off and off of each other and connects in that way. Oh, wow. A thyroid issue from not speaking Sorry, the truth. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I hope you're, you've been learning to speak your truth now. Yeah, I'd even go, I'd even mention, Lexi, on that, that I personally reckon that's the reason why they're masking up. It's the years of culmination, not speaking their truth. And now the ultimate is people getting masked up is now a whole new level of that. So, yeah. Right. It's like an outside manifestation of that. I agree. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, speaking your truth is so important. Making sure that you are sustaining yourself off of true life force and not having to like out, reach outside of yourself for things to make you feel better. And then also uh, being mindful that there are ways that we can get attachments and these attachments are not you. So if you're like, I'm not acting like myself, I don't feel like myself. It's probably because you have an entity attachment or thought form attachment. Okay. Do the next slide. Mind programming is a big one. Um, reversal symbols and subconscious programming is definitely going to affect your chakras. And um, you can do next slide because I think it goes into what mind control, what my mind programming is, is. Yeah, programming comes from family, churches, movies, Hollywood, commercials, ads, music, school, and sales as well. So all of this programming is directly going to affect your life and your chakras. So like there's reversal symbols I've seen come out in movies and stuff and that's actually why I stopped watching movies is because I kept seeing these reversal symbols come out um, from from these Hollywood directors I guess with really negative intentions um, to to block the human energy field and um, all that affects your chakras that's a that's one of the biggest reasons I actually started doing this work as well I was like wow that's not even fair there the human energy field is being attacked and people have no idea because it's so unseen but it's there um, so these experiences create quantum potentials and your chakras, and that's called an imprint. And these can carry over from lifetimes and generations and even ancestral. So let's say that you have block chakras and imprints in your past life that you'll carry into this life as well. If you didn't clear it out. Um, I know for this, I've been clearing out a lot of past life blocks and imprints um, the past few years for myself. And those have been the, some of the most impactful clearings is ones I've done for past lives and then also ancestral um so with how in the ancestral energy works is like it's basically like the bloodline or the energy is passed down from the people before you so it's like you're carrying on that same energy so whatever energy and wherever they were at and whatever emotions they were experiencing it's basically like passed on to you and from there you have to transmute it and do something differently with it unless you want to keep continue to, to experience the same patterns that your ancestors were carrying as well. Yeah, I've got to say, Lexi, and what you're saying, it's really good. And it reminded me of um, years ago when I was in an underground kind of movement and dealing with very high-level people. Apparently in the 1930s, Henry Ford actually sponsored a book by a lady called Dame Edith Starr, where she exposed all of the um, occultic symbols that are being used in products, in society, and how they're used to subconsciously program people um, into compliance um, with, with their regime. And he started, And he started putting them in cars. And I think in the first six months he was releasing the books, three Ford factories got firebombed, and so he ended up stopping putting them in cars. But, yeah, he actually was exposing and pretty much said there's a whole big dark occultic Illuminati planning that goes on all the time. And I've seen this. I, I've had, I had this guilt that would never leave me for years. And just one day I was sitting with a, a ferret clear out. We discovered it. She showed me a symbol. We reversed the symbol and, 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 and broke it. And from that point on, it stopped happening. So what you're saying is really powerful. Just have to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it is really powerful. And so, like, all of these mind control games going on and then people don't even know that they're under this type of attack is, uh, it's not fair. So the more aware we become and the more action we take to protect yourself against this, the stronger that we're going to be um, and the easier we're going to be able to, to push past it. You know, next slide. So imprints and blocks stay in your org field and chakras, which will co-create similar experiences instead of what you truly desire or highest possible potential. So these imprints are 
going to be residing in your orc field, you know, every day until something, so until something clears it out. So this imprint can be, you know, like fear, uh, any fear, any doubt, um, attachments. We'll go into this further, but all of these things are going to directly affect what you want to experience. It doesn't matter how, how badly you would want to experience, you know, a, a healthy, fulfilling, financially successful life if you have these imprints in your org field until you clear these things out you're not going to get to that experience in your life let's look at some of the things these quantum potentials which are imprints create in your life the next slide so they can create toxic partners and relationships i know i had this come up for me last year and it was horribly scary I was on track in my healing thought I was doing really well and then I manifested this really crazy relationship that threw me right off my path and I had to like it derailed me um it was so bad so I had to to, to separate from that and come back into alignment which took a lot of work and I lost a lot of time because of it and do next slide so common for the feminine, what you just said, Lexi, um, and even for guys, I had a few of those in my time, so I can relate. Yeah, relationships are one of the biggest things I feel like that can take you off your path because it's such a distraction, especially when it's just toxic and you're constantly yeah. um, boiling over each other's shadows. It's so silly. Um, nasty accidents can be caused by imprints in your work field, and this could even be passed down. I was reading in the in the book Shaman Healer Sage, where there was a um, she had an imprint that she didn't know she didn't know she had an imprint, but she had this horrible fear um, of dying in a car accident. And she didn't know she had never recalled being in an accident before, but she asked her mom and she ended up, she had been in an accident when she was younger. And um, she got so scared that she like came out of her body and didn't want to go back because she didn't feel safe. So then this, this kept men these accidents kept manifesting in her life because of her fear of it. That's just one example. You do next slide. Depression. The name of the author of that book is um, Alberto Villaldo. It's called Shaman Healer Sage. Really excellent book. All right. So the another, next one is depression. If you're holding on these suppressed emotions in, you're not dealing with them, your life isn't good, your relationships aren't good, you're not making enough money, you feel bad, you're going to become depressed. So this is a direct effect from block chakras. You're going to have poor boundaries if you are constantly being a doormat or a people pleaser. And this book come from sacral chakra not how, or, or solar plexus chakra. Actually, solar plexus chakra is the boundaries chakra. If you have blocks and imprints in the solar plexus chakra, you're going to have poor boundaries. You're not going to know how to say no. You're going to let people ride all over you. And you're not going to have um, the will to stand up for yourself. That's another imprint for chakras. How many of you guys can relate to, to what we're covering and have experienced some of these things? I hear it again, Lex, and go, gosh, I mean, it seems a while ago now, but this was my life. I mean, I would say for about 30 years of my life, this was my life. Everything I'm hearing there, I'm gulping, going like, that was my life until I cleared all this out. Like toxic relationships, terrible boundaries. I mean, my boundaries were atrocious, like, I couldn't, I couldn't say no, especially to a woman, because I'd grown up in a very nagging household. And yeah, no, so everything you're saying, I'm like, God, you know, I can really relate to it. Yeah, same, same here for me too as well. Yeah, so finding it hard to say no, even if you want to, you're not going to be able to say no because you're the biggest people pleaser and you're afraid to hurt somebody's feelings because of the imprints you have. This is a big one for me and kept being highlighted and kept being highlighted until eventually I started getting really angry and just being telling people to like fuck off. <laughs> and that was just me getting <laughs> really mad and still just because I still didn't want to say no, but then they're still asking me and I was just so tired of it. I got mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> But now I feel like I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable to say no if I don't want to do something. Thanks to clearing my chakras out. You can do next slide. Disease and illness. A lot of people don't realize this. Our energy body is affects our physical body so much that if you have serious blocks and tears in your etheric body, then you're going to get 
diseases and illnesses, stress-related illnesses, um, thyroid issues, like someone mentioned before in the chat, um, obesity, um, eating disorders, um, severe anxiety, uh, cancer even, like all of these things are, are directly caused from issues in the energy body. It has nothing to do with what's outside of us and has everything to do with what is inside of us. Wouldn't you agree, Warren? Oh, look, I, the first time I learned that was over 20 years ago, Lexi. I was in horrible health. I had fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, RSI in my arms. I couldn't even type on a computer for more than five minutes without shooting nerve pain. Felt constantly bad guts. And I remember the first time I heard that statement, I was in shock. I thought, surely my mind can't create this kind of stuff. And I was sitting in the office of a psychotherapist who raised it with me. And then my father showed me a book by a guy called um, Bill McRae who talked about how asthma, for example, which I'd been an asthmatic all my life at that time, it said it's someone who's the sobbing child who couldn't even breathe in his childhood because he felt under so much pressure from his mother. And when I read that, I was like, and I read what the asthmatic um, mind-body connection was, I was in shock and go, that's actually me. And that, that's what got me started on this journey because I was so sick and I'd gone to every doctor, I'd tried everything and I just was getting worse. And once I started doing all this and, uh, and learning about the mind-body connection and then how the very mm -hmm. body can cause this, I couldn't believe the difference. Like, like it took me five years to cure myself of that, but nothing, it was literally, it, it, was, it was the energy clearing that I actually did with a particular lady at the time, who uh, a few know here, who she did a session with me and everything went right again. I could type again, I could play piano again. I got wow. my energy back, everything. So no, this is like, that's why I'm so passionate about this because it, it literally changed my life and still does. Same, same, me too. A big one for me is I, I went to so many doctors over migraines that I used to suffer from when I was younger. I did, I had MRIs, CAT scans, everything done. They're like, they couldn't find anything that was wrong with my physical body that would be causing these migraines. And that's because they are looking in the wrong place. It's the, it was my energy body that was causing my migraines. It wasn't anything on a physical level. Um, that's why, that's another thing I'm so passionate is because people go to the doctor, people get these prescriptions to get better and they're not getting better. It's just treating these symptoms and these symptoms are coming from your chakra system. Yeah, well, I've just, my father was the one, I was fortunate that my father opened me up to this because he, at age 30, my dad was being rushed to hospital once a week with a suspected heart attack for six weeks in a row. And when he'd go there, there was nothing wrong with him. And after the six week, he thought, this can't, there's something going on. And fortunately, a, a doctor at the place said, it must, be, it must be going on within you subconsciously. You must be stressed. And he found Bill McRae, the psychotherapist, who helped him turn his life around. And my, he, the first thing he told my dad was, yeah, he showed him the mind-body connection, helped him manage that. It fixed his heart from doing that. But the biggest thing with my dad was my dad had chronic migraines like all the time. He was constantly having to take time off work. And Bill McRae just said to him, migraine is simply an imbalanced solar plexus kind of chakra area where, you're, um, where you can't say no and your boundaries are shit was pretty much what he said to him. So he taught my dad to manage his boundaries and the migraines ended. So my dad, I was fortunate that my dad sat down and shared all this with me when I was really yeah. sick and said, you got to go on a journey of exploring the mind-body connection, Warren. So I did. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, I think mine was, my, I had an overactive third eye. And I also was dropped on my head um, when I was like three years old. And so I just had a really overactive chakra. And just, I was overthinking so much. And that's where my migraines came from. So once I cleared that third eye chakra, my migraines eased tremendously. Like, I don't even have them anymore. I'm going to do a next slide too. Also, I wanted to mention um, in the in the yogic tradition, they, they teach that each energy symbol is a symbolizes of like a pleasure and a, or a pain. And that's what keeps us bound to karma. So our energy body is connecting to, you know, these uh, pains and pleasures and these experiences, but it's, uh, it's to bind us here to this experience. And that's not a negative thing, but what we're choosing to bind us is what's important. So if you're choosing to be binded by negative things in reality, then you're going to have a negative experience. If you're choosing to bind yourself to positive things in reality, then you're going to have a really positive experience. 
experience. So that's the difference. Um, so another thing is like low energy levels and severe fatigue. That's a, if you know, if your energy, if your energy is sluggish energy and they're not spinning the way they need to spin, then they're not generating the life force up your body at all. And so you're not going to have any energy to do anything. You, your body's not generating it. So you're not going to able to expend it. If you're not generating any energy within, you're not going to be able to expend any energy without. Wouldn't you agree, Warren? I would. I mean, I was going to say, Lexi, did you scan my life and do all these PowerPoints based on my life or something? <laughs> I mean, I'm, everything you're saying, I didn't read the PowerPoint properly on this site because you did these slides, you know, I just brushed over them. But I'm like, I'm sure you scanned my life secretly without telling me and wrote it up here. So, I, yes, I, I, that's my way of saying I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I, I secretly scanned everyone's life and knew exactly what was going on. Actually, I just ba went based off of my own life. <laughs> so I know that it's relatable, right? Um, this is the big one for me. I had no energy. I thought I was just lazy. It turns out I wasn't lazy. I just had poor energy flow and didn't have any energy to do anything. Um, this is one of my favorite parts about getting my orc or filled clear was I had the energy to do everything that I wanted to do. I used to feel so bad because I was like, all these people are doing all these different things and I can't even concentrate to do what I want. I can't, like, I don't have the focus. I don't have the energy levels. And it was really, and that would make me depressed and see, you can see how all these things are interconnected. I don't I have low energy levels. I can't do anything. I don't have focus to, to focus on what I want to do. That makes you stifled. That makes you depressed. That makes you anxious because you're not doing what you want to do. So all of these things play off of each other. All right, so let's look now what happens when you have sluggish energy in your chakras. Definitely can relate to that, Madison, for sure. You have no drive to complete your daily task. In the next slide. Trouble staying focused, feeling like you have constant ADHD. I know so many people who think that they have ADHD and they don't have ADHD. They just have really blocked up chakras that are keeping them from being able to focus. So it's just like clearing this out makes your life so much easier and it's such an easy fix. Once you realize it and once you get it and you're like, oh, I have low energy levels. Oh, I can I can clear my chakra and make myself feel better. That's so empowering, you know. Uh, I'm going to do next slide. And then constantly missing big opportunities for advancement in your life. I know this one was a big one for me. I think maybe I even had a couple of false starts with the awakening within because of chakra blocks. We had we've had plans to to work together in the past and even start start doing a course, but I uh, had so many blocks that I wasn't able to do it. And I'm just thankful that it came back around that I did have the opportunity this time to take to take that and run with it because my chakras are clear, you know. You're such a different girl. Like, yeah, you were so everywhere. You were an absolute scatterbrain next to you. Now you're so focused and completely different girl. It's like, I can't believe it. I know I made this whole PowerPoint. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. I mean, I'll, probably, okay, I'll, probably so... I'll probably get kicked out of the awakening room and fired, you know. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm coming for your spot. <laughs> So funny. Uh, so you, so you feel like you can't complete your life mission. Yeah, you can't complete your life purpose or mission. It's like a constant uphill battle. This is how I felt. I knew that I had a big path ahead of me, and I was like, oh, there's no way I can do this because of how I feel, um, and how you feel is so important to your life because your emotions are so powerful, your thoughts are so powerful, and if you're feeling down, then you're not going to be able to get up and complete a giant mission that God's given you. That's for sure. So you can do next slide. I'm becoming lazy and complacent. This is what I was talking about. Um, God, I'm glad you guys are relating to this. Um, just because I know that's where we're at and I know that there's a solution to it. So that's so exciting. Um, becoming lazy and complacent. Once you have no drive, you have no focus and you have no energy to do anything, you just become like, what else are you supposed to do besides just uh, distract your mind with something else besides what you're going through we're always no one wants to sit with that feeling no one wants to look inside of them at yeah. first because it can be really painful really hard when you agree warren i would and i really hope that's a gender neutral um potato head because mr potato head there was a big controversy about whether he should be gender neutral or not yeah i think what people are looking for when they say gender neutral is maybe like andromedas yeah. because we're they're, they're, we both we I'm all joking, have, by like, the way, but yeah, right. I was going to go into a whole thing. Like we both have mass. We all have masculine and feminine. So the potato is Andromedus. That's where I'm going to go with. Yeah. Hopefully that's not offensive. 
<laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. But get going. I know you do that, right? <laughs> You're good I'm at that. Sure. I can't help myself. So what happens when your chakras are clear, balanced, and aligned? We've gotten to my favorite part of the webinar. Let's take a look at what oh, it looks yeah. like when you when your chakras are all clear. You start living from a higher perspective and taking mastery over all areas of your life, relationships, finances, your work, how you feel, the thoughts you have, your daily routine. All of these things are going to start coming into this higher mastery because you're clear and aligned and you have the focus and the energy levels to, to, take, to take on the challenge of your own life. Do your next slide. You have higher energy levels. Um, like I said, this is my one of my favorite parts was being able to have the energy to do what I wanted because um, it was so stifling before. Right. Yeah, it's so stifling when you don't have the energy. It's so discouraging when you don't have the energy to complete the things that you really want to do. So having higher energy levels is like so massive because you're literally able to transform your life just by action. Do next slide. You're going to have a... a mood stabilized you're not going to be fluctuating um with your mood all the time you're like one time you're one day you're sad and then you you're happy and then you're mad and then you're stressed and then you're all over the place because you have all these emotions that we haven't been you haven't been dealing with so you're going to have peace of mind and you have the clear chakras next slide you have sharper focus you're able to complete the task that you want done and you set out to do something and you're able to, to do it and clean up and and have this i just read i read the the comment it's so funny stifled from cleaning up all the filth left behind in the condo yeah i definitely relate to that and all that stuff related in the condo is like all the stuff in your chakras even like that's how i see it. it's just always a reflection of your life everything on the outside is a reflection of the inside so yeah back to this you have sharper focus to be able to um to get the job done and do what you want to do and, and then feel really confident and happy that you were able to complete your task next slide So if you de dedicate time to learning about and aligning your chakras, this is also what your life will look like. You can do next slide. You can transform many aspects of your life and improve them beyond belief, such as, I do like this little graph right here. I want to I go over it. So you have like, intellect, and I love how it's like the colors of the chakras as well. You have intellectual health, connecting with creation, emotional health, spiritual health, your gifts and talents, your financial health, your nutrient and fitness, and your social health. And the, all these things are really important factors of your life and getting your chakras clear will directly affect them all, all in a really positive way. You can do next slide. You can affect your thoughts. And once you have um, clear chakras, you're not going to have these thought occupants sending you really negative thoughts like, oh, you're not capable of doing that or really judgmental thoughts or really um, self-sabotaging thoughts or really discouraging thoughts. All of that's going to go away and you're going to be able to have really positive, uplifting thoughts that are going to encourage you to try new things. Like, you know, just like my new neural network connection of like working out that came from being, you know, uh, clear chakras. Um, and then of course your thoughts are so powerful. So once you have, make this shift and from a negative mindset to a positive flowing mindset, um, that's a really big uh, aspect uh, and change as well that you'll see just, just off of your thoughts. You can do next slide. Physical health, your chakras are related to your physical health. So once you start, um, clearing these out, you're going to see a big difference in your physical health and, and how you feel and. And the, yeah, your energy. Yeah, I'm sure you have a good example of this, Warren. Oh, many, but even recently when I was really out of alignment, I felt one day my throat was starting to get really sore and quite heavy. And I thought, hmm, and I, I, I changed my diet that day. I was drinking water. It still wouldn't leave. And then I just tuned in and I did a chakra clearing and I went through and I cleared the energy. And as soon as I did that, um, straight away, I got this instant download, go and put a herbal throat spray into you. And I didn't. I literally, within five minutes, I was normal. And probably my most wow. profound one, Lexi, was about five or six years, about five years ago, my gallbladder was in agony, like literally in agony. And I know you've been there too. And this was before I'd done, I'd learned about the um, etheric thing in my gallbladder. And I can remember mentioning it to my mentor at the time. And he just mm. said, um, let's get on the phone. And he did a quick clearing with me of my gallbladder and we went through and we did a chakra alignment and clearing and I instantly felt different 
10 minutes later, I suddenly had this urge. I raced to the toilet, did a bit of a, a dump, and I felt all this, I, like I felt a whole lot of emotions leave me. And I got up and I was completely fine. Gall butter, excuse the graphic illustration, but no more pain. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah, no, it's like that, right? Uh, but I think one for me was my back pain and my neck pain. I had really bad back pain and neck pain. It was debilitating. And um, once I started clearing my chakras and, and doing yoga, that was a big one for me. Kundalini yoga helped my back as well, which is Kundalini yoga is all about opening the chakras and getting it flowing. So yeah, uh, tremendous difference. So my back doesn't hurt at all. And it's so crazy because I used to be so scared I was going to be with this back pain my whole entire life. And I kept asking spirit, you know, I'm going to heal my back. And they kept saying yes. So I just kept trusting that. So I'm really glad that they came through with their promise and I'm, I am no longer have back issues. Yeah, so well, Gold Butter and Tonsils, it says Rebecca. So fix the Gold Butter oh. Tonsils. So, yeah. Emotional well-being. Oh, yeah, I remember you um, having your tonsil surgery, Rebecca. I don't think it was a gallbladder surgery. I think it was your tonsils. I remember that. Yeah, that's definitely, it definitely affects um, physical health as well and emotional well-being. You know, like, like I said before, if, um, and I like these because, this image, because the colors associated with the chakras, it's also related to the emotions you'll experience in these chakras, like rage, anger, annoyance, all that's root chakra. Um, I actually had a attachment come on me the other day uh, uh, in the morning. I was feeling really irritated. Um, and I used to suffer from being really irritated a lot before as I suffered because it was so bad. I was like, I'm irritated for no reason. It was just all these attachments. So um, I was like, I'm really irritated. And I was like, this is weird. I haven't felt like this in a while. So I was like, I bet you I have an attachment. So I asked my pendulum and I did have an attachment around the root chakra uh, that I had to clear out. Once I cleared it out, literally as I was clearing out, I felt the irritation just leave my energy body completely. And I was fine. It's that simple. Once you learn how to do it, you're like, oh, this is a thing. Oh, I can clear it out. And now you're just moving on. So yeah, emotional well-being is something that uh, your chakras definitely will affect in a positive way once you start to clear them out. Do next slide. Forget ask us, how do you clear them? Bringing awareness to it and then breathing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a great question. And we'll definitely go over that, Rebecca. So it also affects your life experiences. And so this is like everyday life, you know, everyday life, what you're experiencing. If, if you're going on a trip, are you going to a family reunion, you know, uh, a date, all of these things. If your chakras are clear, you're going to have a much better experience. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I couldn't agree more. It's, um, yeah, dates, especially relationships and that. You get your chakras aligned. And something I learned from even Raymond Grace is you can actually align your chakras and spirit guides in one clearing. And when you do that, the difference can be quite amazing, especially if you're clashing with a partner or with someone you're dating, that what you align the spirit guides and it's amazing. And align the chakras. I've, I've seen things transform in connections just by that one thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's so powerful. So yeah, you're going to be able to positively affect the connections and relationships you have with people um, once your chakras are clear, because you don't have all of these things that are being held in your chakras to affect it. You know, shadows, imprints, um, all things that we would project onto our relationships. That would be that would be completely gone, and all you would have is just love. Do next slide. Oh, it didn't move. Is it moving? There you go. Oh. Yeah, got it. Psychic abilities. And um, this is a really fun one. Once you get clear in your chakras, you're going to be able to open up to your psychic senses in a really positive way because there's also a, the opposite spectrum where you can have a bunch of blocks and, and be trying to access your psychic abilities. And you can experience a lot of really negative entities. Um, you'll be attracting really, really horrible. <clears throat> Uh, situations where maybe you're trying to help people but really you're just playing a rescuer um all kinds of different things that can be affected just solely on psychic abilities once you tap into this it's really important to keep your chakras clear because if you don't it can go haywire really fast finances 
this is a good one. Once you become clear in your chakras, you have a lot better, um, a lot easier time making money, uh, keeping money and using it smartly as well. Yeah, I mean, I was just trying to even cryptocurrencies. I noticed mm -hmm. when I got my chakras clear, I started making more money on it. So, Right, yeah. And then you're going to be able to connect with your immortal self. I think there's some text, more text on the, for this slide. Yeah. Uh, becoming aligned in your chakras helps you access your higher self and your oversoul, uh, the real you, and access your Christ consciousness. So whenever you become aligned, this is going to be able to give you a direct connection to that, your higher morphogenetic chakras as well. And you're going to have a really great connection with your higher self. You're going to be able to communicate with it daily and use it in your life um, effortlessly before the, before you know your chakras are blocked you're not going to have that good connection with your higher self and you're not going to be able to receive higher guidance so when your chakras are clear the connection to your higher self is stronger and you can con easily communicate with you um this is a this is a really big one for me i loved whenever i was able to clear up that connection and and have this guidance system um you know because the higher realms can see into the lower realms so they're able to make the smartest decision for you and they have your best interest in mind so when you have this power this power aspect of you and you're connected to it it will definitely transform your life you do next slide that's uh you can learn to master and work with the energies necessary to nourish your chakras you do next slide in particular, chakras metabolize their life energies from Mother Nature. Did anyone realize that your energy centers directly take energy from nature and the things in your life and use them as well? Just wondering, because I didn't, I didn't know that um, before, and I was really amazed to find out that that nature, that like we are nature, we're not separate from nature. Um, it sustains us and we have this symbiotic relationship with it that, you know, our chakras connect and, and communicate to nature and nature also sustains us as well. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Hug trees. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So I'm glad to know that um, some people are aware of that. Um, and it, all energy used by the chakras comes from five sources and we can take a look at those sources. And, and just by being here, already opening up, it's so cool. Oh, wow. Amazing. Plants and animals. Water. Got to love water. Air. Sunlight. Yeah, right. I love the pig. I love cows too. There's, there might be more cows in my area than there are people. <laughs> Biomagnetic energy, which is chi. Um, or causeway there's people call it different things but it's your life force energy that's that, and that's what your chakras is circulating your life force energy these nutrients are used physically by the body and energetically by the chakra system as well and let's look at chakra dynamics the five lower chakras are the root to the throat and they're nourished primarily by the earth um, in the book, um, Alberto Bellotto calls them the earth goddess chakras. So people maybe with really open or really uh, focused on the lower chakras um, might neglect the higher chakras and then vice versa. You can take a look at the next one. So the lower chakras are best with finer energies of love, compassion, and empathy. Sometimes we mess up trying to process emotions through our heart chakra when it's actually not, it's, just, it's not, it's not meant to process your emotions it's meant to connect you to your reality um the sacral chakra is more of the emotional chakra so that's when we like get emotional heartburn right go ahead warren i was going to say that many plant medicine healers and shamans are very very good in these five lower chakras they're not so good in the upper four but they're very good on the first five right yeah yeah, you'll see patterns where some people are really get really focused in on the body and in the lower chakras, and you'll see some people who are really focus in on the higher chakras and the and the more what are the sky god chakras? So that's like um, arch, architecture, um, what logic, mathematics, all of those things. The four upper chakras, the third chakras to the morphogenetic chakras. Oh, switched it too fast. There we go. Nourished primarily by energies of the sun, air star, and um, Alberto Villado calls these the sky god chakras. 
the higher chakras work best with subtlest spiritual energies. So trying to like trying to put emotions in your higher chakras isn't going to work either. Your mind's not meant to process emotions. Um, so that's when it's all wonky when you're trying to like you have anxiety and you have these feelings that you're trying to process through your higher chakras it's going to like malfunction because your higher chakras are going to work best with subtle spiritual energies now let's like let's look at each chakra and its role in your life we're going to go over um, each chakra briefly and just show you how it connects to your life the first chakra is the foundation of the body and the element is earth its color is red. This is the root chakra. It's the seat of Kundalini energy. This is the, the primal energy that we are born with that um, is intended to rise up our chakra system. The body aspects connected to root are the rectum, legs, feet, and it's also connected to testosterone and estrogen levels. Its instinct is survival and procreation. Psychological aspects are feeding, shelter, safety, ability to provide for oneself, and the blocks that can occur are financial struggles, anxiety disorder, fear, panic attacks, depression, emotionally disconnected, and not in tune with the body. The second chakra is the sacral chakra, and it is the seed of sacred life, meaning this is where you're able to take the energy that you've been given and the life force that you've been given and actually put it and put it into life and into your life and then get giving life. Uh, the element is water. Color is orange. The body aspects are digestion, intestines, kidneys, urinary tract, sexual potency, and adrenal, adrenaline. Instinct is sexuality. Psycho psychological aspects are power, money, sex, control, fear, fighting, passion, self-esteem, sexual, emotional abuse, inherited parental issues. And then blocks are going to be adrenal fatigue, addiction, pain, emotionally closed off, low energy levels, poor boundaries. And I can't see the very bottom no of that. Flow. No, what is it? No creative flow. No creative flow. That's it. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah so say, I was going to say as well, Lexi, on that one. Um, I remember about two years ago, I was in Bali and there was a brilliant sound healer. And he said to me, your chakras are really magnificent. I'm amazed. But he said, there's something going on in your second chakra, it's quite deep. And I can remember, um, yeah, after that, noticing that I had a lot of stuff, but adrenal fatigue would hit me regularly. I would get addictions very easily. Um, I, I, would, I would lose my creative flow. And I sold a lot of that once I got some work on adrenal fatigue. I cleared out my sacral chakra and I got busy with service and just doing creative stuff. So that really helped me too. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. This was a big one for me as well. Um, and this one also has to, because of pain, how much pain I was in, I knew my sacral was really bad. And, and the low levels, low energy levels, of course. So solar plexus is the third chakra and it is our source of personal power. The element is fire. The color is yellow. The body aspects are stomach, abdomen, liver, pancreas, storing and releasing energy and the spleen. The instinct is power. And this can go, you know, bad or good. Psychological aspects are courage, power, expression in the world. Blocks would be unclear life purpose, stress-related illnesses, aggression, insecure, victim mentality, poor self-identity, constant fear of rejection. Heart chakra is the fourth chakra and being unbound from material measures of success and live your sole purpose. The element is air. That made me want to breathe. Sorry. The heart chakra is so connected to our breath. Um, color is green. Body aspects are circulatory system, lungs, breast, heart, and asthma, immune deficiencies. The instinct here is to love. The psychological aspects are love, hope, surrender to another, compassion, and intimacy. Blocks are ego ag aggrandizement. Ad Aggrandizer, I can't say that word. Warren, help me. What is that word? A grand aggrandizement. That's it. Thank you. Resentment, selfishness, grief, loneliness, and abandonment and betrayal. Yeah, the asthma one I could certainly relate to. I remember I, I go a lot to green. I love sitting in green um, forests and green parks. I do it every day when I can because the green really stimulates me. So oh, nature is healing. Very healing. Third chakra. Fifth chakra 
expression of the soul. Element is light. Color is blue. Body aspects are throat, mouth, neck, and esophagus. Instinct is psychic expression. Psychological aspects are manifesting dreams, creativity, communication, and faith. Blocks would be betrayal, addiction, psychosis, sleep disorder, lies, fear, speaking out, gossiping, and toxicity. Right, nurture nature. Third eye is the sixth chakra. Unlimited power, obtain awareness of being inseparable from God. Pure ele element is pure light. Color is indigo. Body aspects are brain, eyes, nervous system. Instinct is truth. Psychological aspects are reason and logic, intelligence, empathy, depression, stress, related disorders, and denial. Negative expression would be delusion, neurosis, inadequacy, and seizures. Crown is the seventh chakra. It's the portal to heaven. The element is pure energy. The color is violet. Body aspects, skin, brain, hormonal balances, hormonal balances or imbalances. I guess I should say instinct would be universal ethics. Psychological aspects are selflessness, integrity, and wisdom. Negative expression is psychosis, regression, and cynicism. And then we're going to cover the two morphogenetic chakras, eighth and ninth. This is the soul chakra of the eighth chakra, mastering timelessness. The element is the soul. The color is gold. The body aspects are the architect of the body. This is literally the chakra that designs and creates the rest of the body. Instinct is transcendence. Psychological aspect are none. Blocks would be templates of disease and cosmic horror. Cosmic horror is when you're stuck between realms of being alive and in and spirit and there's nothing and you're trapped there and it's really scary. And I think I've actually experienced it myself once or twice before. Um, yeah. Messing around with psychedelics in, in a really unhealthy way. So yeah, it's quite scary. Yeah, you end up in limbo. I know there was a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio called Inception where they showed you about that limbo state where you can literally be trapped in the middle of nowhere. And um, one of the big things of the eighth chakra is where you access the Akashic records, your past lives, your where you've been, who you've been. So that's why your soul that you create right now, which then the physical body is all created from the eighth chakra. It's actually the exact, um, it's like the blueprint template. So if mm -hmm. that doesn't actually get fixed up, you just keep recreating the same template and coming back lifetime after lifetime. So uh, every time, yeah. yeah, every time you clear that chakra and clear a past lifetime, or you get more connection to your age, you start to think more transpersonally. You start clearing the self, the ego, and you start changing even who you are living in your karma in this current world. It's quite amazing when I let that one. Yeah, I agree. It's so also the template of disease. So you know, if you if you if you've been having really hard soul experiences in past lives, then you're going to carry those diseases over and manifest them in the physical this life as well. The next chakra. Spirit chakra is the ninth chakra and it is the dwelling place of the great spirit. I think this might be my favorite chakra. I always light up when I talk about it. Um, the element is spirit. The color is translucent white light. Body aspects are none. Instinct is liberation and blocks are none. And this is that chakra is in the heart of the universe. It's in no time. It is never born and it never dies. Um, now that we've familiarized with the energy body, I'm not sure what she's asking. You can start working on getting each of your chakras clear and open. You can see and understand how each chakra affects your everyday life. Um, you can then align your chakras for optimal energy flow. I really like this image here. It says soul energy and just rises right up. Um, the two snakes represent the Kundalini. And then yeah, you can keep going. You raise your primal awareness, which is Kundalini, through each chakra. And it's very important to find different ways to express this primal energy. Once you clear your body and align your chakras and then you're ready to raise your energy up, um, it can, it's really powerful. It's actually like 
the most powerful energy in the universe. So you need to have a good plan on how you want to work with this energy. Do you want to do yoga? Do you want to meditate? Do you want to change the world? Do you want to, you know, what do you want to do with this energy? It's good to have a good plan because it'll hit you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Most people are very suppressed in their prime and sexual energy. And then they end up so repressed, they lose their life force or they end up just sexually out of control. And it's so important to express this correctly and have a healthy balance of in all areas of your life with this. And you can turn it to amazing stuff, can't you? Yeah, you really can. Uh, it's incredible. Somebody asked if we could go back to the spirit chakra slide just for one second. I think they wanted to see it again. Okay, just very quickly. Because you've got to go quite a way back. Yeah, that one. Yeah. There we are, Elaine. Really simple and pure spiritual energy. Okay. If you do not become energetically clear, find healthy expression, it will find a way to express itself in a dark subconscious form. And this could be a lot of different ways. Um, yeah. You could get into dark taboos. Uh, you could get into like watching really dark porn. Um, been there done that all kinds of different things mm -hmm. yeah right i was thinking of you when i said that one <laughs> um really <laughs> lots of dark things oh, can thanks, happen Lexi. if you if you don't <laughs> if you don't clear <laughs> so funny if you don't clear it out it's gonna it can get scary <laughs> if you try to raise primal awareness before chakras are clear you'll experience negative kundalini awakening symptoms these are horrendous do not go there i have mm -hmm. firsthand experience i had my psychic senses awakened and i was experiencing really horrible negative kundalini awakening of symptoms delusions migraines throwing up um no energy hot flashes um horrible manifesting horrible experiences in my life uh, spirits were haunting me. It was really bad. Uh, yeah, I, I it, almost terrible. everyone I've met <laughs> who've done major psychedelic awakenings when they're not ready end up with all kinds of entities, demons, chakra misalignment, um, negative awakening. Yeah, so it's really important that you do that if you've been on that path, you get it cleared out. And as you know yourself, so absolutely. The ultimate secret is to bring the energy up through the crown and elevate your experience. And we say this is the ultimate secret is because they don't, pe the people in power don't want you to know this. They don't want you to know that you can elevate your energy all the way up and start experiencing this cosmic universe that has so much going on. We're just seeing one tenth of the spectrum. So once you elevate to the top, you, um, you open up a multi-dimensional multi-dimensional spectrum and you get to experience your whole entire soul. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, moving it up. It's one of the reasons that um as an aside, Lexi, I remember when I loved um first exploring Tantra and learning how to actually move the energy up my spine. And actually it was life-changing for me because I remember I had a very unfulfilling central life overall because the energy would get trapped. And once I learned Tantra and able to move it through my whole body, it was amazing. So this applies in every area of your life. And then you can apply it in business, in attracting more money to yourself, having more magnetism, everything. Absolutely. It's a life change. It's a, it definitely is a life changer. Okay. Well, before we take We've questions, reached, why, don't we this, why don't we do this together? Why don't we do our clearing on people's um, chakra, on one of their chakras, like we promised? Yes, I'm excited. So this is a, a code, everyone, that we're going to use to do a chakra clearing. And which chakra are we going to do, Warren? Let's do the let's do the solar plexus, Lexi. How about you lead everyone through a solar plexus clearing using this special code, which breaks artificial intelligence connections and keeping people disconnected. And that's the purpose of this code. Breaks the three D connection and attachment. Amazing. Let's do it. I'm just going to pull something up really quick. And so what you're going to do with the image is you're going to bring it into your third eye. You're going to intend that you're breathing the code in and you're going to bring it into your mind's eye and then hold it there and then invite the code in to, to help you release these attachments and imprints in your chakras and just do a, do a breath work of like breathing in 
through the nose for a six count or a four count, whatever's most comfortable. Holding for four. Breathing out through the mouth for six. Just imagine that this code is coming into your mind's eye. The breathing helps you go into a deep brain state so that you're really receptive to the clearing. Just relax and get comfortable. Release your shoulders. Come into suppleness of being. Capture the image in your mind's eye. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realm and alchemical power that this attachment removal, 3D removal code be used to clear all occupants, all eds, discarnates, personas, attachments, reversal symbols, repressed emotions, negative states of the ego related to them from all initiates present from their third solar plexus chakra and activate it to its highest frequency potential and original divine function now in all timelines and in all lifetimes to Asia and to doi. If you can imagine or just intend that the code is moving into, into your belly, into the solar plexus chakra. Work with the code to release old neural networks and old imprints. Receive a quantum release. Spinning, spinning, releasing, aligning, reconnecting to higher self, monadic connection. Igniting the fire in the belly, recalling personal power, recalling personal will. All right, I think I feel some entities blocking the session. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clear that out. Activate all ads that are responsible for any karma between any discarnate blocking the session and every person's here present. Whatever adds to Scarlet Soul Fragments are activated right now, bringing all their male and female opposites and merge together with each other up the levels. Bringing all necessary Christ opposites to clean up demons, thought forms, soul fragments of other people, personalities on the first three levels, then on all levels. Bringing all these adds, mirror opposite adds, and merge together with each other in the Christ opposite up the levels. Running any entity in a pale silver reflective orb. Running a third party feral escort to remove them and take them to earn levels. Realms justly earned now. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realm and our chemical power that this attachment removal calibration frequency code be used to clear all occupants and all ads, discarnates, personas, reversal symbols, repressed emotions related to them from all initiates present from their solar plexus chakra and activated to its highest frequency potential and original divine function now to Asia and to Doi. There we go, quantum release. Feel your chakra spinning, spinning and opening. Releasing, coming into alignment, reconnecting to your higher self.
That was a great job. I'm gonna wow. see. We've got some clear. Have some more. Yeah. That was amazing. I felt that, Lexi. I was shaking like anything. Oh, I yeah, it feels like it's still clearing. Yeah. Yeah, wow, I agree with the comments. It's really just releasing. I was feeling it go right through my Welcome. solar plexus, Lexi. So that was amazing, right in the solar plexus. It felt really strong. Namaste, you guys. Good job. Oh, well. Never and that's how it, right? And that's how easy it is to clear chakras. They're not like this elusive, hard to deal with aspect. They're really easy once you understand them. And once you get comfortable working with them, you're going to become a master of it. Yep, exactly. Once welcome, you, you guys. Yep. Once you get your anything, once you train and practice and keep practicing, there comes a time when it becomes second nature for you, like just then. So thank you so much, Lexi. So Yeah. Wow, I'm getting, read all the comments, like Jackie's feeling peace, um, feeling, you feel a lot of burning, feeling dizzy, a bit tired. Um, Taylor, I love Taylor's comment, Lexi, he says, you kill that shit, Lexi, good job. <laughs> He's gotten a few clearings from you before, so yeah. he, yeah, uh, thank you, Taylor, I love that. Yeah, I love Yay, it. I'm so glad. Yeah, definitely felt solar plexus was the right chakra to do tonight. Yeah. Or this morning. Whatever, whatever time it is, have more energy. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys, you did such a good job. Very receptive, very receptive. And um, I know we mentioned, I wouldn't cover it in the slides, but I know we mentioned teaching you guys a technique you can use to clear your own chakras. Um, one I'll mention is if you're in the shower and um, I, I always take the water's intention to clear my energy body as, as well as my physical body. And that's a good way. But if you just take your, if take your hand, you just take your index finger and then just move it in the rotation, your chakra is supposed to go. It's like you're, you're acknowledging your chakras there, you're touching the energy, and then you're also intending it for it to move in the right direction. So just say, I intend for my chakras to, to flow smoothly and align and, and, and help me master my day. Just a quick tip on how you can just do basic energy maintenance in the shower in the morning. Wow. Well, thank you, Lexi. So. Yeah. Yep. Clockwise. Exactly. Wonderful. Well, Lexi, wow. Thank you so much. And before we go and share how you can further your learning, um, thank you for those of you who've come and enjoyed it today. And who enjoyed Lexi sharing today? Yeah, Taylor loved it, smiled the way through. Grace, Madison, yep, Sammy, um, Sheldon, um, Becca, um, Jackie, Steve, yep, no, wonderful. Who do you think she's better looking than me? And I hope none of you say yes. Garlic. She said, no, I need garlic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a black band. Sorry, guys, you're on the permanent black band list for that. Jackie, oh, good, Jackie. That Jackie, you get special treatment. <laughs> so funny <laughs> oh dear oh my goodness well any comments people so before we go and share what, how you can further your learning any questions or anything about chakras and then we'll just finish off yeah Bernie she's amazing yeah she is great isn't she I, I agree Elaine, which way your finger, left or right with the finger? Yes, yeah, so you're going to go cl uh, clockwise, counterclockwise. With yeah, the finger the whenever you're doing that. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah to the left, yeah. <laughs> well, everyone, you've certainly got a lot of great information from this, but if you haven't done anything with aligning your chakras before, it can be overwhelming. So this is about what you can do actually about it and how you can further your learning. So who would like to know a little bit more about options you can go forward and learn? Who would like to learn a bit more today? <laughs> Jackie, you've got to make these men feel good, Lexi. <laughs> you weren't very sincere, Jackie. Love you too. Sheldon, yes. Anyone else? Who'd like to hear a little bit more about how you can learn this? Madison, great. Yeah, Grace, Steve. 
Liza, fabulous. Taylor, Kathy, Santane, Jody. Okay, great. Wonderful. So what we're looking at now is a step-by-step -step program you can go through on how to implement it. So how would you like to receive one? Implement an incredible, simple, yet effective clearing program into your life. So who wouldn't, Elaine? Says, I agree, Elaine, absolutely. I mean, how would you not? I mean, I, I spent like literally hundreds of thousands of dollars getting all this kind of knowledge. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I, I flew five trips to America um, from Australia. I, stay, I had to stay in hotels. I went to various workshops. I spent thousands of US dollars just to learn this stuff. So it's just the best, best knowledge I ever got. So the great thing with the Chakra Alignment Program that we're looking at doing together, this will be Lexi and I working together with this, is that you'll be able to shift blockages as well as increase and harness high energy faster. And it makes it a lot easier to freely manifest more money, experience better health and living the life you desire. So what we'll be covering in the Chakra Alignment Program is learning the higher knowledge of your energy body to gain wisdom, clear and align your chakras daily. Receive a thorough in-depth clearing for each chakra to enhance it, the energy levels and health. Gain knowledge on how they work. We obviously brushed over them today quite a bit, like we really went over the nine chakras, but we'll really cover these very, very succinctly in great detail to learn how they work, what causes them to get blocked, what keeps them blocked. Because the reality is when you're living in a planet, a bit like living in a dirty house, if you... If you moved into a house tomorrow that was dirty, that was filthy, that had dust everywhere, I'd give you probably 48 hours before you'd be dirty, dusty, and feeling filthy. And so chakras, yeah. likewise, when you're living in this planet, you start to feel dirty very quickly. Just because you're getting brainwashed, we're getting hit every day, the energy of toxic people, even family members thinking negative thoughts about us have been proven to affect our energy. So this is about learning how they work and what's generally going to be out in your life and how to keep clear and as Lexi shared a lot about today what's helped her and I especially is releasing hidden emotions trauma or sabotage freeing from sickness unhappiness learn how to keep your chakras aligned consistently for a successful and happy go lucky life live your path to achieve the results you want in all areas of your life and really how to do all this so it's going to be nine classes in alignment with the nine chakras. So week one, we're going to be doing an introduction. So this is where we just do a bit of an assessment, an overview of the energy body. We talk about the clarity. We go through the basics of shamanic training that we both had on just understanding how energy flows in your etheric body and how you master it and how you start to, to become aware of what's going on in there. So this is setting the foundation. Week two is, is, the, is the root chakra. So it's all about that. Now, I mean, Lexi and I both agreed, if only we'd had a program like this, and we're not just saying this, when we first started our journey, it would have been so much easier. I mean, I, I think I was getting cleared of chakra blockages for about 15 years before I really understood them. And now that I understand them, it's so much more powerful. So the root chakra, what causes imbalances, what causes you to go into fight and flight, survival fears, panic attacks, how it all applies, and how you can clear that and how you can ground yourself. The third class is about the sacral chakra, and that's the big one. That's been my biggest one I've had to keep clear. That's where you have sexual energy imbalances. Master Raymond Grace, who some of you may have heard, actually said that pretty much nearly everyone who's ever walked into his class, especially fem um, women, have got major imbalances in that from the Middle Ages, and that's been pretty much my experience too. So ways to clear and bring balance and how to actually get it going. This is one area where I transform my sacral chakra by learning how to use art, music, creative energy, do regular clearings, use the color orange, and just how to do things like that. So the sacral, we then go into boundaries, and this is a really exciting part. We go into the solar plexus chakra, your boundaries, how to center your personal energy, solar plexus clearing, and yeah, how to reclaim your power and become empowered back in your life whether it's in your personal life, your family, business, anything. Then we go into the heart chakra. I'm almost certain that we'll have a lot of people um, weeping and crying in this particular one and releasing a lot of traumas. I know when I've worked on my heart chakra, there's been a lot of healing that takes place. So this is where we anticipate the healing. Week six will be about the throat chakra and how to speak your truth. 
that's going to be one where we're going to really get people learning and practicing speaking their truth and becoming really good at that. That is one area that my experience is not very well done in this world today. And it's why the, the planet is in such a mess. So we'll be doing a lot of work around the throat chakra. We're then going to cover the third eye chakra. Now, if you ever get into a time in your life where you notice you're overthinking a lot or your head is going absolutely like, um, like feral, it almost certainly means that your third eye is blocked. And unfortunately, this chakra, my experience, is one of the most assaulted chakra by the elite and by energies because they know that this is the beginning of connecting into your oversoul, into your higher self, into your ascended way of being. Most people I meet are very, very blocked up in this area. They've had fluoride put in their body from young, which has been known to calcify the pineal gland. They've had toxic chemicals and heavy metals, which also does it. So I know in this one here, we'll be sharing not just about the energetic clearing, but I'm going to be sharing a lot about the physical things you can do with dietary changes, detoxes, things you can actually do, even a brief mention of Tantra and how you can use that to activate your third eye. So that'll be a very exciting one. That one may go for a bit longer than the others I anticipate because it's so important. Then week eight, we go into the crown chakra, which as Lexi put, the gateway to heaven. This is what I call the beginning of the oversoul. So you can't even access your oversoul beginnings until you've got past your sixth one. That's why we're going to be spending some really good time on that one. But once you start to access the crown, now you're starting to get in your oversoul or higher self. My experience, especially people with heavy religious backgrounds, have got major, major, major blockages. If you or your family or you live in an area where the mass consciousness is very church-driven, things like that, you can rest assured that there's going to be some major, major blockages in that area. So um, this is going to be an important one just to get everyone to learn how to connect to heaven or what I call connect to your crown chakra, really connect into your higher um, energy vibration and start connecting to your oversoul. Who here out of interest is really keen and knows what I mean by higher self or oversoul and has got a real kind of desire to connect into that and break free from religious? Like who knows you've got imprints in that religious area of your life and you really want to get that out of you. That was my biggest hindrance for myself. Elaine, Madison, yep. Um, Sheldon. Yeah, I know, Lexi, you have. You grew up in a very conservative religious um, state, and many people in America have. I was, a, Elaine was a monk, yep. I was a celebrant in my past life, I remember. And so this is my experience, a really big one. So I'll be really going into this one. And week, then week nine, we'll be covering the eighth and ninth morphogenetic. This is when you're now in your oversoul, timeless self, Akashic records. And I think Lexi and I would both agree we're expecting to see past life readings, past life Akashic memories. In some of the webinars I was doing last year, in other stuff with this, we were going back in the past lives, remembering the Middle Ages, people were remembering things on the stake, all kinds of being burnt on the stake, being in monasteries, all kinds of stuff. So I expect this one here to be a little bit crazy. Um, and then, then we'll be covering the tools and guidance to move forward. My feeling is that that, that week nine or class nine may not be enough um, to do all of that. So we may end up giving you a bonus class, seeing how we go with time. But rest assured, we will make sure that whatever it takes, we'll get everything covered. Yes, the Dark Ages, um, LA, my experience is that almost every, every Indigo I've ever met, female, who comes and joins these kind of courses, once it starts activating, start remembering the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages. And I was shown a lot about that time uh, in, in past life memories, and it was horrific, absolutely horrific. And as Raymond said, in fact, he has never had a woman come into his workshops who doesn't have major trauma um, in their past life, especially in their sexual chakra, their second chakra, um, and around their seven from the Middle Ages. So the bladder meridian, Elaine, that's correct. So, yeah, I would really, I would, I would love as an intention for myself, but for those who are part of this course by the end of it, we will see a lot of um, these things cleared from people's lives. I know that I had some dark Middle Ages imprints myself about being in prison for speaking my truth. And so I had this chronic fear, like about any kind of um, cage or being locked up somewhere. I would go almost beside myself, like if, you, if I was locked in a room and couldn't get out. And I remembered being in the Middle Ages and being in this very dark prison for quite some time. And I also had an absolute terror um, when I was getting acupuncture of needles being put into me. So 
you know, um, when that happened was, um, yeah, I realized with the guy I was doing it with, there was a past life. And once I cleared all this, honestly, I love acupuncture now. I get it quite regularly. I, I, I'm fine if I'm in a closed room now. I don't have that problem anymore. So these things all basically happen. So these are the kind of costs that for each one you'd be paying. So, and when we do this, Lexi and I went through, we got a bit of an idea online as to what you'd be paying for, say, a training or something in, in, a, in a chakra. And that seems to be about right from what we came up with. I don't like a lot of what I call the direct marketing where people just make figures up to try and show value. So we tried, for me, it was important to make it as truthful as possible. The other thing I'll mention too is about exaggerating, I spent over $100,000 myself to get this kind of knowledge without any, any question. I had to go to all kinds of workshops, seminars and learning because unlike today, it wasn't as well known as it is right now. So these are what you were beginning. Yeah, you agree, Lexi? Yeah, same. I've had to pay a lot of money as well. Yeah, a lot. So you're kind of getting the benefit of our combined wisdom. So this is basically what you're getting. You'd be getting access to the recordings. Um, that's the total value, like 1970. Now, as most of you know, come to our webinars previously, I always believe in rewarding people who take quick action. And the reason why is it makes our life easier. We find that people get better results. And subconsciously, when you get rewarded for taking better action, you tend to do that more often. I've trained myself into that habit. I can remember a reward of $1,000 cash being offered at a seminar for a person who did the most action. And I actually won that award because I was just moving fast on everything. I even do things like when I go swimming at the beach, if the water's freezing, I will gulp and dive straight in because my rule of thumb is if I hesitate because it's cold, I'll hesitate on a key life decision. So that's why I don't have any problem saying if you take action today, you can, you can buy this course anytime up until we start, you're gonna be particularly well looked after. So firstly, you will get a free one-on-one -on -one chakra consultation with Lexi herself. So Lexi, you'll get a booking link, you'll be able to go in, and as well as the course, she will do it anytime you want to, before, during, or after the course, you can book that session in with Lexi. And this will help you to fast track a particular blockage you may know that you have. And believe you, Lexi is brilliant. I use Lexi myself every now and again on stuff when I get stuck. And I even, even only two nights ago, Lexi remember, I messaged her during the night and asked her something about some negative energy I just felt was there and I couldn't put my finger on it. And she straight away got onto it for me and helped me out. So we help each other out. The second one is we have a codes, pyramids and sacred geometry course. That's something which I did to show you how to actually use those to enhance and be an energy magnifier to clear blockages in your life and things like that. So that's another one we've got as well. The, and then we've also, we've actually got a really good indigo, rainbow and crystal child training, which William did and which we're going to be enhancing. And you'll get the current one as well as the enhanced one when William does that. So finding your soul group training for free. So that's where you can actually go through and work out what kind of indigo are you? Are you a blueprinter, um, a Pleiadian, an Arcturian, a Syrian, a Hadarian, a Mission Realma, an Adolfo Centauri? Who knows about these, by the way? Who's very familiar with the soul groups when I mention that? Yeah, I just want to mention, I, take, I took this training when it first came out and I was blown away by how amazing it was and how accurate it was and um, definitely resonated with every bit of it and really enjoyed learning about all the different soul groups. No, excellent. Lexi. No, I agree. In fact, I'm glad you reminded me of it because I forgot we even did it, which was quite funny. So That's funny. I had to remind you of it. Yeah, I was arguing with Lexi about a, a week, about a couple of weeks ago. She's telling me about it. I said, we've never done anything like that. She goes, you have. <laughs> and then, of course, I check and go, oops. So, Next existentialist. <laughs> so here's what you would get. So nine transformative trainings, which is 1773 value, unlimited lifetime access, the one-on-one -on -one clearing, the two free courses. And really, like I said, there's, I could probably throw a lot more in just based on what it cost me, but I'll just keep it really simple today. So if you're a fast decision maker, we're keeping it really simple. Now, keep in mind that the kind of level program that we're going to be doing today is something that in days gone past, when I was doing really high level 10 classes, minimum was around about 2000 US. We're deliberately doing this because what I'm hoping to do 
is you're the first ones in this course. It's a brand new course. We've never done it before. So we're going to look after people especially well in this one. So basically, it's 997 up front, or if you don't have that money up front, it's basically just the cost of going of maybe missing out a day or two at the pub once a week, which I'm sure you would agree that clearing your chakras is probably a little bit more important than going down the pub and um, basically five days a week. And if you cut it back to a few times a week, I think we'd all agree it'd be well worthwhile. So 29.70 per week over 40 payments or 9.97 up front. Now, what we also do, I, we always give a risk-free guarantee and it's really that simple. If you sign up for the course and within the next week or two as we're starting it, you go, I just don't want to do this. And even if you're doing some of the classes and you've done a couple and say, nah, you know what, this is not what I thought it would be, just let us know and we'll refund you your money. That's simple. So I do that because I don't have any doubt people will get spectacular results and I'm willing to put our money where our mouth is, as is Lexi. And if we can't deliver, well, then we don't deserve to get rewarded. So we will definitely take the risk out and put your money where the mouth is. So today, 997 upfront, um, one-off investment, or basically 40 easy installments of 29.70 per week. Okay, so this is the link which we'll put in the text chat. So who's interested in finding out more about this or keen to look at doing this program? Just so we get a good idea. Oh, no. Here's the link. Great. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Mike. You've got your message. So who's interested in this program? Um, or at least would like to find out more and keen to be part of this? <laughs> Elaine, the money's tomorrow night. Well, just message us privately, Elaine. Because like I said, if someone's keen and Kathy's keen, wonderful. Elaine, yep. We generally keep it open. I'll keep this offer open for basically um, just for the next um, couple of number of hours or whatever else, just because we realise people have got to get money together. So great, Kathy, Elaine, anyone else? Okay, yep, Christine, yep. Elaine, do I direct message you on Facebook? Just email us as support. Yep, you can message us at Facebook. That's fine. Yep, Christine, that's great. Okay. Yep, okay. Okay, so any more questions? So maybe, Lexi, you can make some more comments on it and just how you think it will help people who are interested. Yeah. Um, I feel like the a support system is super helpful when you're when you're going through all this just because it can be really hard to go through on your own just because there's lifetimes and ancestral and then you're in in this lifetime um there's so many imprints that we can come across in our chakras i feel like um this opportunity to do it with you know trainers and, and a group is um really awesome and i would have loved to have the opportunity to do that excellent now just one other thing for those of you who aren't quite sure what is the right timing for you, what we're also looking at offering as well with this is for those of you who basically aren't ready right now, you can't basically come, oh, my battery's low. So you can't actually um, do it straight away. We are looking at offering a recorded training, which means it would actually be after the seminar, you could get in a special deal. Now, if you basically pay over the next 24 hours, where you can lock in the recorded version. Who would be interested in that? Okay, yep, Sheldon, great. Couple of people there. Elaine, me, fabulous. Okay, done. So we will have something out to everyone. And we'll take some notes as to who's done, and we'll get an email out to everyone who's registered. So any more questions before we finish?
Sheldon works for my time. Great. Yeah, does anyone have any questions about the energy body or chakras or the course? My pleasure, Bernie. Yep, any questions? Okay, well, well, thank you very much for being here. And trust you got great value. Um, we, for those of you who just need a bit of time, the process, how it will work, just so you know, is that there's no problem with that. Although you won't get all of the bonuses that we promised, you will still get a couple of the bonuses, which will be depending on when you do that. So you won't get all the bonuses. Only those who sign up today get all the bonuses offered. But otherwise, there will certainly still be a couple of those courses will still be available. Okay, well, thanks very much. And thank you, Lexi, for being here. Thank you, guys, thank so you. much. Thank Bye. You. Bye, everyone.